Good morning, good evening, everybody from Down Under, Australia. I want to talk about pretreatment today and compare some of the pretreatment processes and how the modern technological advancements have gone from one stage to the other stage. Now, pretreatment is the process, as a definition, is the process upstream of RO to condition the raw water. And pretreatment is the key to protect RO membranes from fouling, to maximize efficiency and membrane life. There are a few options here for, for, for pretreatment, and that primarily depends on the source of the water, whether it is brackish water or deep well, or, or just uh, artesian well or, or a surface uh, water like lake water. And then you have industrial and municipal waste. And the last one, but not the least, is the sea water. So depending on the source of the, of the water, the pretreatment differs. Now, some of the challenges of treatment, tre pretreatment of industrial and, and municipal water are very different from seawater. And if you can classify into two, two, two categories here, the industrial water and municipal water will require a certain a pattern of tre treatment or sand filter and a biological filter and a biological treatment and then a sand filter or a DAF. So it all depends on what is coming in, into the raw water. It could be inorganic salts, metal oxides, organic content, that is the TOC, colloidal silt, or biological activity. We shall deal more with seawater today. What is the best uh, source of water for seawater treatment is the open seawater. Now, advantages of open seawater, if you can, if you, is that it can give you a consistent supply and fairly consistent quality. Unlike the brackish water, where the well water can change, but seawater is fairly consistent. However, the feed water quality can change due to seasons, seasonal change. Now you see here the picture here, which shows this is in, in, in China, one of our plants there. When there, you can see the green tide. And the one on the right side is the right red tide, which you usually see in the Middle East. Now, these are the big challenges for a, for a RO plant. You need to have a proper pretreatment with, with the high consistent, high and consistent output quality requirement for RO, it's the biggest challenge. Now, as RO manufacturers are producing more and more tighter membranes, like for instance, the, in, the, uh, in the late 90s and early 2000s, we had membranes like the surface area is about 300 square feet. But now we have membranes which are 440 square feet. So thanks to the automatic winding machines and also the glue lining, glue lining and all, which is very consistent nowadays, we can increase the active surface of the robot, of the RO, RO membrane. But on the other side, we have challenges on the pretreatment because the, now with the tighter membrane, you need even uh, a better pretreatment. So look, let's look at some of the processes that comes in, into play here. Now, this is the Adelaide uh, seabed intake. It's 170,000, 137,000 cubic meter per day plant. Now, you see the depth of the seawater is about uh, 14 meters. And it's about uh, 1.4 1, 1 kilometers from the sea, from the intake point, from the shore. As a rule of thumb, in a seawater intake system, you need to consider a few things, only from the process point of view. The, the intake mouth should be at least eight to 10 meters deep at a low tide. Now this is required because if at this uh, level, they say the sunlight is minimum. So you can avoid the lavish growth of algae. And the other thing to consider is it's not in an environment where there are ferries running and there's oil spills and all because oil, is a killer for a membrane. Uh, this one is in Gold Coast. In an in a, in a intake system, you do a periodic chlorination 
nowadays there's no continuous chlorination. Yeah, if you have any questions, you can ask though, because I'm going to skip this slide. Usually there, there is chlorine injection, which is very effective biocide. Now, depending on the water pH, chlorine can exist as hypochlorous or hypochlorite. Now, if you see the graph here, the more the uh, pH, the more the less effective is the activity is the chlorine. So the seawater is almost around eight pH eight. So we we need to actually look at you know it, at, usually the pH is about eight eight to eight point four. So the effectiveness of chlorine is not that much. Yeah, shock chlorination is okay, but continuous chlorination no. Now, Genesis has a research product in their, in their portfolio, which has got proven uh, track record, which is called Genesol 80. It can work online and offline. And it is a bio, biofilm stripper. You may have a lot of the bacterial density, but bio, when the biofilm is formed on the membrane, and it's very hard to, hard to remove. Genesol 80 can do it. Yeah, we can talk about that if you are interested. Now, the next important item is the cartridge filter. Cartridge filters, five to 10 microns, and uh, the vessel is made of construction uh, material or high-grade high stainless steel or FRP. Now, in the picture here, which shows Perimont's FRP filter housing, it has got a handle, swing handle, which will make it easy for, for replacement of the membrane. So then the, so the uh, actual downtime is much less. And we also got some other equipment. Perimont has also got some other piece of, pieces of, of, the, of the equipment, like the piping inbuilt sample, pi piper link, which is uh, permeant piping and inbuilt sampling points. So those are also things which can help us reduce the time of the, or reduce the down, downtime. Now we're talking about the fil uh, of sand filter. Sand filter is in-depth filtration, so breakthrough can happen. Limited filtering cap capabilities. Filter water usually gives you TSS more than uh, five ppm, and SDI is around five or more than five. It requires high dosing of coagulant and poor rejection of bacteria and viruses. It usually comes with the large footprint because there's a lot of civil work needed and the velocities are low. So you need a lot of space to build a sand filter. In some countries, like in Singapore, it is a no-go. There is no space to build a sand filter there. So there, most of the, uh, almost every plant there is, is UF. Now there has been some development as our next speaker will talk about which is called the AFM media. It's a recycled glass media, which has got this biocontrol ability. That can, that can actually be a, a, a game changer. Still have some what can go wrong with the battery treatment? It can cause inorganic, inorganic falling or organic falling. And this, is, this can give, make extensive damage to the membranes. So what you need to do here is we go to the next one, the UF. We're just seeing the consequences of the, of the bad treatment. Now, UF can come in, in different forms. There is uh, PD, PVDF, PES, or ceramic. It can be in and out, out in uh, process. And UF, you need to choose, it, choose the UF depending on, on your field water condition. And you have to make an educated choice there. Choice there. In out is used in some sources, out in is used in other sources. So you've got to be careful there. Now, why UF? This is, this is very important to know that whatever is your feed water quality, the permeate coming out of the US is consistent. Look at this uh, turbidity graph here, which is quite consistent, the red band here. And also the TMP uh, is, not, is within the limits of 0.2 bar. Now, I put a chart here to compare uh, UF and, and sand filter. Filtration in depth can break through can, is possible. Whereas in UF, which is a surface filtration, there's no big breakthrough. I hope breakthrough is, is easy to understand. When you, 
when the when you have the filtration going on there will be some portion of the filter where it is where the suspended solids is all and it's stuck there so that will cause the bypassing of the filter so the, your filtration efficiency is is reduced whereas in a surface filter you have consistent quality coming out and they are fine limited Fil filter fine is limited and in in uf is very good filtrate water quality as we just mentioned to you tss in uf can be less than 1 and sti less than 3 footprint <laughs> large whereas uf is smaller coagulant doses mid air filter requires huge coagulant those 3 to 4 ppm whereas uf requires only 0.3 Point one to point frequency, so RO frequency also will be will be cleaning frequency will be higher and and in this will be lower. So what happens here is some of the UF the feed water can contain organics and these can go and get stuck in the membrane, and it will not come out with your regular CIP, CEB, and CIP. So what you need to do here is you can have very disastrous uh, results here. With, with these species. Genesis has got a special chemical which is called Genesol UF, which has enzymes in it. And this can give good results as you can see here. Now, th this is the last slide. I will, I'll just take one minute on this. Now, usually there is uh, fouling happening in, in the, when you start the plant, fouling happening and which you cannot see. It's called unseen fouling. And when actually you start to see here where the TMP starts up, goes up, and then you clean, it comes down, but, and then you, but you can see the graph going up all the time. So what is this unseen fouling? What happens here is if you do not control your, uh, your cleaning regime here in, the, in this area, then you can have this, this kind of graph. It always goes up. But if you can uh, do some, take some good action when there is unseen falling, then your RO performance is, is very good and your performance is good. So the advantage is fallen easier to remove, increase interval between cleanings and reduce falling.